two very exciting shoes and a tough decision. Which one to get? Nimbus 25, Invincible 3, let's find out. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we are comparing two shoes that are very interesting and many people want to have that comparison because they may pick uh, one or the other for their daily trainer early in 2023. We had the Nimbus 25 and the Invincible 3. Uh, you can find these shoes at our partners down in the description. It really helps us. These are affiliate links and we get a small kickback. It helps the channel. This is really, if you want to support the channel, this is really one of the, of the main way to do it. Thanks so much if you can use those links to purchase your shoes. Let's go directly into the specs and compare the weight of the two shoes. 355 grams for the Invincible 3, quite heavy, and 295, um, around 300 grams for the Nimbus 25. Uh, so, you know, 60 grams difference, the Nimbus is way, way lighter. Let's compare the width of the platform. I don't know if you can see it nicely like this here, um, but the, the Invincible is really, really wider. Um, there's like eight millimeters difference in the forefoot and six millimeters difference in the heel. So quite wider on the Invincible. It depends what you're looking for. You know, there's no good or bad here. It's really, if you wanna have a wider platform, something you can be a bit more stable on in terms of inherent stability, not necessarily the, the ride as a, as a whole thing, but inherent stability and that platform is a bit wider on the Invincible compared to the Nimbus 25. If we're looking at the upper and we're comparing a, an upper here on the Invincible, which I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest, sort of fly wire in the upper uh, here and some heel slippage. The tongue is okay and the laces are okay, but the upper as, as a whole thing uh, is a bit too snug for me in the forefoot and I have some heel slippage here. Whereas on the, on the Nimbus, it's almost perfect. Lockdown is very good in the heel and the upper is very comfortable. This is, um, you know, the comfort is better on the, on the Nimbus 25. The laces are too long and I prefer the laces of the, on the Invincible. And the tongue, the stretchy tongue of the Nimbus, I'm not a huge fan and I would rather pick the Invincible tongue, but overall the upper goes to the Nimbus 100% and comfort fit goes to the Nimbus as well. Midsole and ride, here we have some Zumex foam. So it's a Pbax foam from Nike, um, no plates. Here we have Fly Foam Blast Plus and Pure Gel in the heel, a new technology from ASICS in the heel, and Fly Foam Blast Plus, which you have on the Nova Blast 3, a bit on the Super Blast, and so on. So two popular foams on each shoe uh, from each brand. Let's describe the rides in one word or a few words, because one is, is maybe a bit tricky, and then I will tell you which one I, I prefer. The, the um, ride of the Invincible is a bit more bouncy, and a bit more wild, despite it being less wild than the previous versions of the Invincible, if that makes sense. The ride of the Nimbus, let's call it comfortable, this, despite not being super soft. So, you know, it's a soft-ish ride, but it's not super soft, it's not mushy, and it's really, really comfortable. Comfort comes for the upper, but also for the ride. It's not as bouncy, not as fun as the Invincible, but it's a comfortable, very, a bit more consensual, but not boring ride, and certainly very, very um, fine in terms of cushion. If I had myself to, to pick one out of the two, and this is quite tricky, I have a preference for the ride of the Invincible in terms of, uh, you know, the, the bounciness and how the foam reacts, but I have way more pronation on this shoe, and I feel way more stable in the, in the Nimbus, and the, the, the upper here kills it. The heel slippage I have in the Invincible doesn't make it a very, very um, pleasant overall experience, and it, it tones down a bit the, the fun I have with the midsole. Whereas the Nimbus, you know, the, the midsole isn't as, as fun, as bouncy, as um, deep in terms of compression as on the Invincible, but it's more stable and the, the whole experience I'm having with the upper being so comfortable makes it, a, you know, something that I'm, I would pick more often despite it being my, not my first choice um, in terms of just the midsole, if that makes sense. So just the midsole, invincible, whole shoe goes for the Nimbus because of that, of that nice combo with the upper, the, the extra stability. 
Outside durability, this is a bit a bit tricky. Outside in terms of grippiness goes to the to the Invincible. The Nimbus outsole isn't super grippy, and that's one of the drawbacks I have with the shoe. Durability, I would give it to the to the Invincible as well. Although I believe the, the Nimbus will be more than fine in terms of durability, you can probably get at least six, seven hundred kilometers, you know, that three, four hundred miles out of each of the, the two shoes. I I just think that the, the outsole will maybe um, last a bit longer on the Invincible, provided that it doesn't get un unglued. Uh, it doesn't get unglued here on the on the side because the you know it's kind of wrapping the, the shoe here. And if it gets unglued, then you know this is a bit of a less pleasant experience. Whereas here it doesn't really have a chance of, of happening. The whole shoe durability will probably be a bit better on the Nimbus because of the foam compressing a bit less and being more consistent through time. I think that you know the, the ZoomX foam here will compress and will maybe lose a bit of that compression over time, but it's still a good durability and I wouldn't be too worried in terms of durability for, um, for these two shoes that we have here. Price point, 200 euros, $160 and um, $180, 190 euros. And this is very tricky, we have four figures. So if you live in the US, you have a link in the description to our partner running warehouse. This is 160 against 180. I would get the Nimbus or the Invincible V2 discounted. If you live in the EU, this is 200 against 190. And this is like a, you know, so-so type of choice. You can go either way based on what I just said. If you're more of a, you know, if you want a bit more fun, if you want something that um, probably also works a bit better at, um, let's say, endurance paces if you're a more advanced runner or if you want something that can be your only shoe because you're a uh, you know beginner intermediate or less advanced runner the nimbus can do all sorts of paces even you know a race like your first marathon 100 percent whereas i wouldn't recommend to run a first marathon in the invincible mostly because of uh, all that pronation going on and you know the leg saving will be very good, but the stability and um, the amount of energy you lose because of sinking in that foam, that's probably why I wouldn't recommend it for a first um, marathon or a marathon in, in general. I hope this makes sense. I probably forgot stuff. So if you have questions, go in the comments, ask me anything, and I will be more than happy to reply. Thanks a lot for watching this comparison between these two shoes. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, and go beyond your limits. We'll put here on the screen another comparison uh, we have. Let's look at the comparison between um, the um, older Nike shoes. Vomero, Pegasus, Invincible, we did that one year ago. Let's put that on the screen. Thanks for watching, guys.